9, we opened up our tire bags, and we're going to move on to step 30 here. I do want to show you some differences with what we're doing here. First off, bead locks. We have inner and outer bead locks. I'm doing so much building, my knife is getting dull. And we also have beadlock screws. So put those in a little cup or something because there's a lot of them and we're going to be using them in rapid fire motion here pretty soon. The inner and outer beadlocks are the same for the front and the rear tires and wheel assemblies. This is the rear. It goes on the back of the wheel. And you can see it's fairly thin. And this is the front, which is the smaller of the two. And it also has a little fancier design to it. So keep in mind we have a front and a rear. For the tires and the wheels and the foams, there are fronts and backs. These are the wheels. The backs are taller. You can see here that uh, the backs are the taller of the two wheels. So let's go ahead and separate out our rears and our fronts. I'm just using this so that you can see the difference in height. So separate our, our fronts and our rears. And we're going to set those to the side. We have foams which go inside of the tires. This is a front, which is an actual open core foam rubber, and you can see they've already been pre-glued for us. And this is a rear, which is a solid molded foam. And on the back it does say 70 by 190. And that those are going to go along with the rear wheels, so we're going to set those aside with the rear wheels. There's also a front and a back to the foam. This is the back. You can see there's bevel there, and this is the front where there is no bevel. There is no difference in the front foams, or yes there is, I'm sorry. Again, the bevel which goes on the back and no bevel which goes on the front. We'll separate those out to the side. I'm going to take a look at our tires. And the tires, again, you can see there's a height difference here. And also on the tire itself, the fronts are 190 by 60. And the rears, which are the thicker ones, are a 190 by 70. So we're going to put the uh, rears, Mr. Bill is hiding in there, going to put the fronts with the fronts and the rears with the rears. On the tires themselves, there is a front and a back. The front of the tire area here is smaller than the rear. The rear is the larger opening. Hopefully it's, you can see here, it's much larger so this is the back, this is the front. Okay, so where do we start on these things? I'm going to clear my bench off, and we're going to get uh, ready. We'll start, let's start on the rears. So we're going to get one rear tire, one rear foam, one rear wheel, one rear bead lock, and one front bead lock. A lot of pieces to tires. And then we are also going to get out our bolts, or I should say our screws, and we're going to use those. So get ready to build some tires. Okay, let's get started on building some tires here. I'm gonna, like I mentioned before, I'm going to do a little bit different than the directions. If you would like to follow along and do it the way the directions say, feel free. Uh, there's as many ways to build tires as there is people building them. So I'm going to show you how I do it. We've got an inner and an outer, an inner, inner, and an outer. There we go. 
we've got a rear wheel, a rear foam, and a rear tire. So the way that I do it is I'm going to insert the foam inside the tire first. And again, we have the rear that has the grooves on it. The front is flat. And the rear of the tire has a larger opening than the front. So you're going to have to play around with it for a while, but you're going to insert the foam, which is pretty dense. And I'm doing the, uh, the rears because they're actually a little harder than the fronts, so I'm doing the rear for you here. We're going to go ahead and insert the foam rubber down inside the tire from the back, noting that the back of the foam is in the same direction as the back of the tire. And it gets folded up in there and it's not even. Best thing to do is just get it in there, play around with it for a little while until it sits in there the way that it should with nothing folded over. Now we're going to insert the wheel with the forward portion of the wheel, which does not have the ridge on it. We're going to insert that down inside of the tire unit. As we're putting this in, we need to take very, very careful note of the screw holes. So you're going to choose one screw hole, and you're going to look here and see the notch here. Let's choose one notch, and we're going to key in on these notches and the screw hole. When we put this in, we need that screw hole to match up exactly with the notch on the tire as we're pushing it down in. So don't just push it in and then try to spin it uh, on the rears because it just doesn't happen that easily. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking note here and pushing this in so it's exactly lined up. And as I go in further and further, I'm going to make sure that my I'm matching up just as accurate as I possibly can. And that's looking real good. So I'm going to go ahead and push that in. This is what it's going to look like from the other side. And you're going to see there's still a big gap here. I'm going to eye down and I see that all of our holes and our notches are matching up properly. So I'm carefully, without spinning anything, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to start peeling this tire up and over the wheel. Once you get a little bit, it's pretty easy. You just go around and peel it up. Once that's done, we're going to push the wheel down the rest of the way. You can see here that there's a gap and then the foam and that, that wheel needs to sit down inside of that foam. So very simply just going to work it around until it pushes in. Now I'm going to peel this back and show you how that foam looks when it's properly seated. There's not going to be any type of a gap. That's from the rear. And we'll look at it from the front. And you'll see that it sets up just even with the edge of the wheel. Now the next thing that we're going to do, just kind of play with this. You don't want to play sideways with it because you're going to spin it. But we're just going to play with it and make sure that everything is just sitting in there the way that it should be. Now we're going to peer down and take a look at our alignment. And the alignment that we're looking for is there's little tabs on the bottom of our wheel or of our tire on these on these tabs there's little nubs there that you can see and those nubs have to fit down inside of the little gaps in here and they have to be even from side to side they cannot overlap a screw so if we take a look here and push down on this we can see that they're perfectly aligned with nothing covering the screw and they're going to press down into those grooves properly. If they're not, 
if you're off just a little bit, you can take your tire and let's say it needs to spin this way, you can take your tire and grab it with your fingers and just kind of work it around a little bit like so and move it, you know, just a, a small amount at a time until it properly lines up. Now that I've just misaligned this tire, by doing that, I'm going to have to work it around a little bit until it lines up. There we go. Now they're lining up just perfectly. I'm going to start on the front, which is the smaller side that has, that's the rear, that's the front. I'm going to start on the front. And what we're going to do is just with our hands, just work the tire and with our thumbs, let's push those down and make sure that they're all going to seat down properly inside those grooves. It's a lot of working and playing with these. Okay, once we're satisfied that that's going to happen, is, comes the tricky part. On the beadlock itself, again, we're going to have those same notches, and then the screw hole, and then another notch, and the top portion has to fit inside of those. So let's line up a screw hole, and what I like to do is just start with one. And I'm going to push down on this, and it should eliminate that gap so that it sits completely flat. And I'm just doing a fitting test right now. Now I'm going to take my other thumb and push down, and what it's showing me here is that's pushing down real easy, and there's no rubber sticking out, and there's no gaps, which means that one's perfectly aligned. And everything is falling down into place. So now I'm going to grab one bead lock screw and I'm going to go ahead and I like to hold down on both sides, push down on it, make sure everything fully seats in there properly with no gaps. And I'm going to insert one bead lock screw. Sometimes the first one is a little bit difficult to get aligned, but you'll get it and you'll start to feel it feed in. You never want to over tighten a beadlock screw. We're going to tighten this down just until, let me see if I can do this on camera, you're going to see a small gap underneath my Allen wrench just right there. You're going to tighten this down just until the gap disappears and you'll feel a little bit of resistance on your wrench. And you can see that there's nothing pinching out. This next side is laying down pretty well. Now we're going to peer over, we're going to skip this screw, and we're going to peer over and look at this one, and look down inside to make sure none of the rubber is being folded over, and that should pinch down and set down very evenly without a lot of resistance. If that's happening, let's go ahead and put a screw in there. If something is folding over in there, uh, you can get a small little Allen wrench, and you can, you can play with the stuff down in there a little bit. You, can, you may even want to spit on it. Um, I don't suggest using any soaps or any other fluids other than water and or spit on there because it'll evaporate. So now that one's pressing down perfectly. So I'm going to work my fingers, or I'm going to hold that one down and work my fingers around and start helping those other ones seat into place. So we have a screw here. We're going to skip a screw. And now that this one's laying down, we'll go ahead and put a screw into that one. 